just when you thought that we were safe from movies that use COVID as a huge part of the plot, think again. I saw Sick. Uh, I know that sounds weird. The movie is called Sick, S-I-C-K, Thick. Uh, this is the new horror film uh, on Peacock. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it started as a Peacock original. I'm not, I don't really know much about the backstory of this. All I know is it is streaming on Peacock right now, but it's got some, it's got some, uh, it's got one name t- behind it that kind of um, gives it a little bit of credit, you know, a little bit more than what your average kind of streaming horror movie is. And that is, it is written by Kevin Williamson, the uh, writer behind, you know, maybe you've heard of him, uh, Scream, Scream 2, Dawson's Creek. Uh, I know what you did last summer. Uh, I think he had a hand in the faculty as well. He just, that like kind of 90s, early 2000s horror and teen uh, writing, you know, uh, he had a big hand in a lot of that. And so now he is back with this script that uh, was, again, I'm not sure uh, when this was written. It feels like it was written kind of like right in the middle of the pandemic because this is a movie that is, a COVID movie. It is, a, you know, a lot of, you know, there's movies out there, like in recent, uh, the most recent one comes to mind, Glass Onion, a movie like Glass Onion acknowledges COVID, uses it like for a second or to kind of set the scene of where we're at or when we're at. Uh, and then there are movies like this one that are like, no, 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 COVID plays a huge part of this this movie. We all probably remember it vividly. Uh, there are some things that they do in the beginning. The characters walking around the grocery store kind of sets the scene, masks, fights over toilet paper and and, and random stuff. And then, you know, uh, arrows on the ground to just say, hey, you can only go this way down the aisle. I mean, it, looking back, you're like, man, what so insane, you know, like that. It does a great job of that. It does a great job of setting that scene of like, hey, you remember this? You remember like, remember only like less than three years ago? This is where we're at. Someone's killed uh, while setting up kind of this idea of like we are in COVID times. And then it follows um, two friends as they go to quarantine um, before going home. They're at school. I think school was kind of let out. Hey, go home. We all remember uh, one of the characters, her dad has like a, a hunting lodge or something in, in the middle of nowhere. So they go there, quarantine before they go home, just to make sure they're all good. This movie's very short and it kind of just breezes along and you're like, is this a boyfriend? Is this a thing? I'm not really sure. But this guy shows up, um, freaks him out for a second. And then um, a little later, a killer shows up. And not like... Uh, Screen killer or a Friday the 13th or a, a Halloween. Like this is dude in a ski mask, you know, classic. So is this movie any good? It's fine. You know, for a horror film that's on streaming, it, it's probably a little bit better than some of them. It's really just kind of a, up until the end is kind of just a very, uh, I don't even want to say copy and paste because it doesn't even really like live up to kind of what the slasher greats are you know like this it's a very small cast so you have very few victims not a lot happens i mean there's moments of like ooh, whoa yeah, that was a that was a crazy kill but a lot of it is the tension of they're running you know they're trying to escape this killer the guys they they messaged me the other day and they said hey when are we getting this sick review and i go what uh-huh and i go oh yeah i watched sick three days ago and I had forgotten totally about it. How is this tied to COVID? Well, short from being set at the early days of the pandemic. (laughs) So it turns out there are, it's actually a family of killers. The whole movie, we're kind of shown this clip of one of the girls and uh, like just kissing like a random person at a party and she posts it on Instagram and that's what gets the boyfriend slash fling kind of there and upset and and we just said, yeah, that's that guy. That's the guy. You know, he's the guy. We don't really know him, but he's the guy. Uh, the guy who, you know, the kisser, you know, whatever. So <laughs> this family of killers is actually that guy's family. And they are there to kill this girl because she gave him COVID and he died. Yeah, it's kind of like a little too 
real and close for comfort for probably a lot of people. Once you see it, you're like, okay, yeah, that all clicks. Um, that makes sense. They were teasing this pretty heavily. And, uh, you know, and then it goes into the girls like, I'm not sick. I, 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 I'm not sick. And then they do it. A, a rapid test, which it's April 2020. I don't think they were around. And if they were, they were not. I don't think just able to pick up at your local pharmacy uh, just yet. But uh, they test her. Hey, she has COVID. I think the party was like a week ago. I'm not sure. You know, it's like she's asymptomatic. Oh, OK. Uh, and then she kind of, you know, they have to try to figure out their way out of it. The, the girls do. So. Uh, and then you find out the first kill actually is the person who gave her COVID. So it's like these are um, uh, contact tracing killers, if you will. You know, I think we're going to look back at a lot of pandemic movies. We're going to have to look back at this era. And we're going to say, OK. Are these movies good? Are these movies saying something? Um, there's a lot of jokes about, you know, there's a lot of moments and jokes about masks not jokes more like hey where's your mask i'm not going to let you the killer stretch you i'm not going to let you in until you got a mask on you know just things like that um it, it's a it's we're gonna have to look back at these movies and say can we are we going to be able to rewatch them in, in 15 20 40 years you know and uh, i'm gonna say most of them no uh your glass onions yeah you probably can check that one out or if there's something that's like you know acknowledges COVID, but then it, that's not what the movie is about. Um, but this movie hangs its hat so much on such a giant part of our lives from the last few years and does so with just no kind of with very little exposition. You know, normally, you know, I know they say exposition, not, not great, but it does it without, like, if someone were to watch this in 50 years and have really no idea that this was all real and that this was a very big thing in our lives or didn't know what contact tracing was or asymptomatic was or you know the idea of like don't have a party you know we didn't know a ton about covid yet it's just gonna be they're gonna be confused it's gonna be weird you know the thing is like with scream with those movies like scream uh it, it's just yeah i i wasn't in high school in the in the late 90s but like uh, you know, it's still the same. It's like, you know, kids will be kids. But they're going to have a party when it's kind of crazy. You know, it's like the, it does a great job of setting those things up and being still relatable even now. It, 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 is it saying like, hey, don't overreact or don't, you know, hey, this is kind of crazy. These kill it's the by the end, there isn't like a man, I'm really sorry I gave that kid COVID. It's like a, hey, we're like, don't kill us. We're going to kill you instead. And you're like, what, what? what's being portrayed here and i think i think with with it still being so recent and still on everyone's minds and still in our lives a lot of times it just it's it feels a little um it feels a little too soon if you will uh you know this i i think about the other covid movies and it being you know you know like what if we did a bank robbery during COVID? Or what if we did this during COVID? This is pretty much like the consequences of COVID. And it, it while also being tongue in cheek about it. So I just don't know if we're ready for a movie like this. I think that given a little, a little distance, um, a little bit more explaining once we get to that part, that moment, um, and this would have been an okay movie. This would have been a movie that like maybe resonated a little bit more. Just like a, a five out of 10. It's fine. It's, it's got some, some okay kills, uh, very little, but they're okay. Um, it's a little, there's suspense in there occasionally. And I mean, it's, it's a nice mi like minimalist movie. And I think that's, if you're a fan of those little things, Reminds me a lot of Hush that came out several, you know, gosh, almost like ten years now. When I saw the arrows on the ground of the of the supermarket, I immediately like like started to freak out a little bit because uh, I remember just being in the grocery store and being like, I gotta, I gotta follow these lines. Like, I don't. Oh, am I in the right aisle? Oh no, I'm scared. I got it. So even that just gave me a little bit of anxiety. So it's on Peacock. Yeah. Maybe check it out. I don't know.
you make the decision. I don't know. Un esercito di proni. 